Hi everybody, um, this is Jerome Wright again, and you're joining me um, once again on my Jeronification channel here on YouTube. Alright, in, um, in this video, I'm going to be mixing up a little bit of, of um, speaking about the Ark of the um, Covenant and my Grand Canyon discovery, which I, I and periodically will be going back and forth to. Now that my audience is growing here, I, um, I, I definitely I want to keep you guys in tune with um, what I, the amazing discovery that I made there at um, at the Grand Canyon. Okay, I um, it's my position that everything that is relating to this stuff here is depicted right there in the side of the Vishnu portion of that of the Grand Canyon, and I mean it's. I mean, it's, it's a blockbuster, to be totally honest with you, because everything dealing with the angels, about God speaking to Moses between the two cherubs, you know what I mean? All of this stuff is in real life, right there at the Grand Canyon, and it can be verified, not just in the images that I'm, I'm producing, but in archive images as well. But before I continue on with that, cherubs, I mean, what in the world, I mean, you guys look at cherubs in a divine sense but through my paranormal experience encounter when I see these guys and these depictions of these um of these angels you know what I see based on my extinctive gift to all of this is that I see the likenesses of mankind here there emerging from that of our ancestor which is the dinosaur well the dinosaur is not shown here in the physical sense or depicted in the physical sense but then and again it is because the angel wings that which is a representation of that of the bird is actually directly linked to that of our ancient dinosaur from which the bird actually derives. So this depiction is showing us how mankind emerged from that of the dinosaur. The ancient history of how mankind evolved through to the point that we currently are. We came from the dinosaur. Through the bird is telling you. That's what this depiction is. Now, this is the symbolic message, the symbolic symbol of that. Now, there's something else about this that I actually want to um that I want to detail. I want to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. That's that's what this is right here, okay? And there's others that um that show, I mean, people are are, are are knocking their heads against the wall, dedicating their entire life to find out what's happening with this Ark of the Covenant thing. It's my position that the Ark of the Covenant is representing that of genetics, mankind's genetic. It is, it is sort of a, of a holy grail. But there's moments in the Bible, like where Moses, where God was supposed to have spoke with Moses between the two cherubs and their suggestion that this is the Ark of the Covenant. Well, on a larger scale, I'm going to show you something on a larger scale. But however, let me see. Um, yeah, it says that um, God was said to have communicated with Moses between two cherub um, cherubim of the, um, and then it says on the Ark's cover. But check this out. I want to show you something. Where are we at here? If God spoke to Moses between two cherubs or cherubians, cherubians, then here is a depiction of the Grand Canyon banner. All you have to do is Google a photo. Just Google a photo of the Grand Canyon National Park banner. This image is online. Through my paranormal experience and encounter, when I look at this, 
I mean, there, this is an amazing archive photo of the Grand Canyon. But when I look at this, I don't look at the words written. I don't look at the scene. When I look at it, I can see the multi-dimensional faces on the rocks, which is another thing because it is also said that God was supposed to have taken Moses into the tabernacle and showed him the inscriptions on the wall. And then Moses created this so-called Ark of the Covenant. It's my position that everything that is here is on the Ark of the Covenant. So what is here? See my video on this. I actually have the video as well too. These cherubs these likenesses again, it's my position that angels represent the faces of mankind which emerged from showing you with feathers with the wings from that of the dinosaur which these wings are associated with that reptiles everything that the wings emerged from or evolved from is a representation an extension of that of that creature which is the ancient dinosaur reptilian creatures that emerged from the oceanic waters of our planet and that's what this representation is and through the feathers the wings emerged mankind's likenesses these two faces people how can I take these two faces similar faces and place them here in the Grand Canyon one there and one there and with their wings do you know what their wings are they're sharks the bodies of sharks the Colorado River is down in this area I'm gonna bring it in black and white the Colorado River is right here those faces these are the bodies of sharks shown emerging from the waters okay here's a larger than here's a larger image of that right there you see the grand the, the, the parks let me let me get this right here for you you see where the K is right there in the park right there and then there is the, the, the symbol that I showed you right there in the Grand Canyon oh I want to tell you people that the exact image that is here on this side on this side of the rock is also on here now God spoke to Moses between the cherubims now God spoke to Moses between the cherubims and then showed Moses the writing or the inscriptions on the tabernacle on the walls of the tabernacle this is this whole grand canyon I can read this, this these are inscriptions on the on these canyon walls in the grand canyon I'm going to show you some other things as well too now people there are the cherubims right there look look people these faces although these are in our time appear here on the Grand Canyon in a larger than life scale look at this chin mouth cheek cheek right eye left eye their hair shown and this is the Colorado River down here look at this symbol now this symbol what do this symbol represents well according to the Bible the Ark of the Covenant hold on now hold on that such a symbol where the cherubs are or the cherubims are represent that of authority the culture of the um, of the um, Israelites the rod will be a natural symbol of authority people here is a rod between these two beings depicted here on the side of the Grand Canyon this is a rod a symbol of authority look at this the lost symbol 
You don't see nothing like this in our ancient biblical texts or images or in no artwork that is just depicting these. But yet I have discovered this through my multidimensional sense of awareness and some multidimensional sense of vision. Now, the Vishnu portion of the Grand Canyon is supposed to be 1.7 million years old and supposedly had been carved by the higher levels of the Colorado River. But people, this archive image clearly shows us that there is a image here, a symbolization. There are carvings here on the Colorado River wall. So what in the world is this doing there? What is this doing there? Something is, is, is you know what I mean, very bizarre here, people. This is beyond the Holy Grail. These angels are shown emerging just as these angels are. Don't you see that this is this is very peculiar? It's shown that mankind is emerging from creatures. And this artist captures it as well too. Look at the multidimensional faces that are in here. Tells you through which creatures Look at the, if you look closely at these images, you will see multidimensional images. And this is why these artists create these unusual multidimensional depictions when describing these alleged uh, messengers of God. The reasons I'm, I'm stating you to you that this is, is because of what I've discovered about what is happening here. The true, these are the true canvases of our ancestral true artists. You know what they were? The mountains of our world. They were the true art forms that were created first. Our mountains, our ancient mountains, globally, is what, where we can find the answers as to who we are. Everything that is dealing with God, everything that is dealing with angels, the text, ancient writings, Aaron's, well this is not Aaron's rod, but this is a symbol of authority. You have the cherubs here. There they go, right there people. I'm sure you see them. The symbol of authority, the staff up the middle. Everything is right there. God spoke to Moses between the Cherubims. All of this which is taken and put it into text of the Bible, I've discovered this to be before all of that right there in the Grand Canyon. This is a government this is a government circulated image that is on the internet today. All you again, all you have to do is go to photo of the Grand Canyon banner. And this image is there. This is not no Photoshop people. This is the real deal. Okay? Now, beyond that, you have tours, you have archive images. You have explore, um, exploration images. Of when the, I don't know when the camera was first, the, the, the um, digital camera, whatever camera was actually, um, when um, even a flash camera was created. But people, there are images, photos of this location right here that even may even go beyond. But from this point, I have extracted through my multidimensional sense of awareness because when I looked at this image, my eyes went right there. You know why? Because through my paranormal experience and encounter, my multidimensional sense of awareness and vision, I know that this is there. I instinctively knew when I looked at this image some two or three years ago. This is on my alien UFO site. And wherever there is an indication of our ancestors 
and the messages that they left behind, I can find this just as I have here. Look at this symbol, people. Nobody can do this. Not until now. Through me, through my eyes, my multidimensional sense of awareness, my multidimensional sense of a vision, I can bring you this anywhere in our world and anywhere beyond our world. There is a readable passageway, multidimensional passageway, that you can read through this stuff to previously, to, to worlds that were previously, a uh, previous is my position that Mercury and Venus were worlds before ours where life forms skipped from one location to the next just as we are skipping now to uh, Mars it's my position that these planets in proximity with the Sun are being unthawed it's my position that Venus and Mercury has had their times and as they were being unthawed, they are frozen eggs. And as they are being unthawed and cooked to the point where they were no longer able to sustain life forms, they went from, life forms jumped from one planet to the next. And now we are enjoying a scenario that once was actually, I mean, in, in a way of life, in so much as far as life, the way we're enjoying life right now, it's my position that Venus and Mercury once survived in the same way, and now that our planet is being cooked, pretty much, microwaved by the sun to a point that where we will be extinct, we are now looking to other planets to survive on just like our ancestors did. It's my position that NASA is very well, much aware of this information and what is happening is that they are cross-contaminating our world with Mars, which everyone claims that Mars is a place where life had already existed. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, this is not the case, people. What is happening is that Mars is a frozen mass, an egg. And it's my position that the reason why it looks like a desert is because it's nothing more than collected upon space dust that is on there. Like a lint ball that's in your dryer that collects dust. That is what's happening right now. Okay? It's my position that as the sun intensifies and radiation on Mars frozen masses and water will appear and subsequently life forms would actually come that's my position it's my position as well additionally that NASA is cross contaminating our world with Mars now let me continue on before I get sidetracked with that. Let's go back to what I'm doing here with this. The symbol of authority right here. Look at this. It looks like a bass guitar. The head. Look at that. Between the two cherubiums. Again, this image exactly, exactly is over here. So when you Google this image, there's one of the heads right there at the tip. This side, they're identical. God spoke or speaks between the two cherubiums. These images, people, there's an image of a God figure there too with other multidimensional images. If you want to see my other videos on that, check it out. He would be right here in a multi-dimensional image and I can actually draw his face along with many other things that is actually depicted on the side of this canyon wall. Now, I'm going to take you back to something else too. It's my position that these angels are shown emer emerging from sharks. The sharks' bodies are in the Colorado, shown coming out of the, um, the, um, the Colorado River in depiction with the mouth. shows you how we emerge from these creatures, people. 
our entire life is in writing, in images, in understanding, once you open your mind up to the truth and reality for what it really is. I'm going to show you something else, okay? Because it's my position that the Grand Canyon shows how mankind emerged from oceanic creatures. Now, I'm going to show you some more images because this is the Ark of the Covenant to me. The Ark of the Covenant is right here. This image, this image, the founding stones, these angels are on, then it shows the hole in the middle, is right here. These are the founding stones of mankind. There is the angels showing you the building blocks of life were right here at the Grand Canyon. There's another archive image of the Grand Canyon. Here's the Colorado River. You see a man repelling. This is the Colorado River. You see a man repelling on a, a cable. You see two men standing there. Look at where my arrows are. Look at that face there. I'm gonna, I should have a clearer picture. I'm going to bring in a clearer picture of that. This is also at the Grand Canyon, people. Look at that image. There's a glyph, as you would expect to be an Egyptian glyph, on the wall. Look at the images right there. I'm going to see if I can bring that in clear and show you exactly what is there. show you what is actually there at this first arrow people there's an image of a man a man with a wing on his head right there there he is look people there's his chin there's his lips his cheek area there's his nose there's his eye socket here's his forehead and he has a curled over horn or snake like creature right there Look at how the wing is attaching his head, the bone structure and everything. Look at his cheekbone, his, the muscle line in his cheekbone, how the wing is attaching his head. Then the other creature, here, there's a face of a woman that is right there. And she has wings coming off of her head. And you know what this, this, this woman reminds me so eerily of? Remember that, that, um... The Flying Nun, I forgot her name at this point. There was a show on back in, I think, emerged from the 70s of that Flying Nun. Reminds me of that Flying Nun's cat. But then look, up on top of this woman's head is a cat-like creature, and these are actually like his whiskers. You know what this is showing us, people? How through a sequence of genetic bridging, with creatures. It shows us how we emerged from the waters of our planet through the creatures of our planet to take on the likenesses that ended up resulting in what we have become today. Now, I'm going to show you that woman that I just showed you alongside of the man. And this is how I can pull these images up because I can see their multidimensional faces. See that? See that? And that is what is here in inscriptions on the side of the Grand Canyon wall. Now, God showed Moses in the tabernacle the inscriptions on the wall. I'm showing you the inscriptions on the side of the Grand Canyon wall. 
I'm telling you that the entire Grand Canyon location, even with the immense erosion that is on that location, I can still see images that were created by our ancestors. A book, stone tablets in lifelike forms that are along the Grand Canyon Wall. As that resonates with you, that thought, I'm going to take you back to the angels on the Grand Canyon Wall. I have videos on that too, people. I like coming back to this because as my audience is growing, I want to let to keep letting you be aware. Because I keep saying, watch my video, look at my my um my um my recent my 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 previous videos. But I want to go back to this to keep showing you. Now. These are God's cherubiums. There's a symbol. I'm showing you that through the oceanic creatures of our world, it's showing us that we emerged. Now, there's discussion of aliens and reptilians and other beings. But basically, watch the alien I mean watch the angels' faces become that of aliens. Let's turn over nice and slow. There you go. Here's the neck, collarbone line, chin, mouth, right eye, left eye, and this alien has a fish-like gill on its head on both sides. And look at what the symbol becomes now. Turned over. You know what this is, people? It's the reverse side of how the likenesses of these beings became. These multi dimensional depictions are original from that of our ancestors. This is not artwork, people. This is the real deal. Meaning that what you can see as being us today, these images, which are authentic, also show us what we look like from the beginning. And I can read them all. I can take you back beyond that of anything that you can possibly ever imagine. So, this goes back to be the beginning of time. This goes back to the beginning of time. A time where there is no record of, or so you think, a time where there is no Nobody speaks of this. Look at look at this here, people. I want you to look at this. Because I can take you to the true faces of our ancestors and show you who they are. And where they came from. And how they were created. The reverse world of these veins. Now, what else is there? Now, it's my position that the entire Grand Canyon is a readable history of who we are. So, therefore, that was one area. Let me give you another area. I can take you any place in the Grand Canyon and bring you evidence of who we are. Here's a location atop of the Grand Canyon, which by the way the Grand Canyon people bears the name of all Hindu gods and Hindu beings, and yet 
there is not even supposed to be no ancient Hindu culture that ever existed in the Grand Canyon. But yet, just practically every temple there is referenced that after Hindu beings. And nobody can tell you the um, the exact reason why, just like they can't tell you what the cross represents in the Bible, but I can. If you were to ask the Pope what do the cross represents, he couldn't give you the answer. Or any other highest authority in our, in, 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 in our world, you know why? Because they're suppressing the truth from you. You want to know what the cross means? The cross represents the cross referencing of mankind's genetics, mankind being. Cross means cross referencing of mankind's genetic being, along with creatures as well, too. Okay? Now, let's go back to this. Um, is this the Brahma Zorus's temple or the Isis temple? I always get this um, screwed up temple at the Grand Canyon. You can Google this image. Um, I don't know if it's the Brahmas or it, it, it escapes me at this time. I'm not going to go look at it because I'm confused because at first I started calling it the wrong temple and then now that sticks with me. So I don't know if this is the Isis temple or the Brahmas or it's temple, temple. But anyway, nevertheless, it's my position that these are ancient ruins and sculptures of our ancestors atop the Grand Canyon. We're residing down here. This is up on top. It's my position that all of this at one point was filled in and then washed away. And our ancestors existed on a plateau that was once up here, on an elevation that was much higher. Just like in um, a lot of the other ancient Peruvian finds that they're finding, these civilizations that stayed up atop mountains which makes sense too by the way people because we are living in a watered world meaning a fish tank that was actually once filled at levels that were much higher than what they are now so our it's my position that our oceanic water levels would have raised been raised or was originally at levels that where our ancestors would have logically had to reside on the higher planes. So, give me a minute, people. Excuse me. It's my position, people, that our world is losing its water, being extracted through the evaporation process and the chemistry of our sun, with our sun, and the core of our planet, and the moon, too. There's an extraction process. I have a video on that as well, too. So, therefore... The water levels at being higher in this fish tank of a world that we're living in, our ancestors would have begun living as they evolved onto the land at higher planes. And this is the evidence in which I offer to you from which it actually occurred. Now, what is actually there? Excuse me again, people, I'm being interrupted. Here we go. Go to this temple. And this is what is there. The top of the temple. There's a face right there. The top of the temple. See that see that almost that impression on the face right there? The top of the temple, the head is missing. But here is what is there. This is what is there. There is a face.
there's a place there. Alongside of that face is a prehistoric creature. An extension of the creatures that it created, which is that of mankind. And it shows that emerging, just like I showed you with the with the angels, that they emerge that they emerge with from there is a great white which is there, and the great white has legs. A fish shows you through this stage in chemistry of this great white with the legs showed you change to this creature and emerge to this creature. And it shows you other likenesses. Then if you come to the other side, shows you beings with wings on their heads and everything else. And there is even a shell like up on top. It's my position that there was a row of stairs here. And these are ancient temples. There's another being there depicted. There are actually lines. There's a line right here. Iron like creature right there on this side. And this is a temple. There was a stairwell. And this column is my position that it slid away. I actually drew it in here, put the lines across. Because the impressions are still left of the stairs, the casing just slid away. And this is the top of the Grand Canyon. You can see my video on that here. I'm not going to actually go back into that. Now, what is else is at the Grand Canyon? Well, um, I have a bunch of pictures here. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you some that you can actually see here. Um, before I end this video. Alright. Here's a trail on the Grand Canyon. Here's more evidence in the rocks. Here's more evidence here. Here's a trail. Here's the Colorado River down here. Okay. There's a trail right there. Now, I'm going to show you something. There are multi dimensional faces on the side of the rock here on the side of the rock here's a skeletal figure first right there there's the teeth in its mouth there's its eye socket this is its head there's its neck and here's its body also multi other dimensional faces right there Alongside of that is a more familiar face that you can see as an ape. There's the bottom chin of the ape. There's the ape's mouth. There's the ape's nostrils. There's the ape's left eye. There's the ape's right eye. And here's the ape's top of his cranium right here. Next to that ape is our reptilian ape ancestor. Here's his bottom chin. There's his mouth coming over his nose. And there's his eye. The reason why this ape looks like it's looking at you is because this ape has multi-dimensional faces. If you were to be standing and looking at this ape from this direction, you would be looking at this ape dead on from that direction, from this direction, and from this direction. This ape's face has the likenesses from which it morphed from genetically. Alongside of the Grand Canyon, this I don't have my needles um, file up here. Hold on for one minute. I might have. I don't know if I can bring that up. But in my needles video in South Dakota, which I don't have up here, I don't believe at this point. So therefore, I'll direct you to it. So my needles, I have Grand Canyon stuff here in fact. In my needles file, you would actually be able to see that I've discovered that there was a reptilian ape ancestor 
If you look at my needles discovery in South Dakota, you'll see the same exact images in the top of needles. It will have a reptilian ape, the most familiar face of the ape that we can recognize with, and then it shows you how man emerged. The same exact thing is in my needle South Dakota discovery in Black Hills. At the top of those needles, we have the same depiction of how man emerged from these creatures. This is a representation of oceanic waters, a reptilian ape. The ape, as we know, emerged onto uh, land as became closer to man, and then the likeness of man right here. All on the side of the canyon wall there in the Grand Canyon. Here's, I'm going to go back to the Grand Canyon because I gave you this image here. I'm going to give it to you in a more realistic sense. This temple at Grand Canyon is what I can see even through the erosion. Some of this is still there. This place is, is steadily eroding away. This place could be preserved had the truth been known about these locations. It's my position that the top of it is now chopped off because no one knew it was there, of, of, supposedly, until I actually found it. But there's the left eye, the right eye, the nose, the mouth, and I added the hair to give you the real sense of the being that is actually being portrayed there. See, see the seashell like stuff there on the top. There's the body of the lion like creature right there, like you would see at the Great Pyramid, I mean the, the Great Sphinx of um of Egypt. And then there is a being with a um with a like a wing and like attachment to his head. And people this is how the Indians arrived at wearing the feathered headdresses that they have. Because at some point, these ancient people either instinctively knew or felt or found an ex found the record of which told them that they emerged from the dinosaur. And which is why you have in a real sense where the Indians wear imitation feathers, you have beings that at one point evolved through the Grand Canyon that had the wing attached to his head in the real sense. And this is why these beings now, today, are wearing feathers because at some point they identified that their ancestors had wings on their head. Do you see that face, that portrait, the nose, the eye? Look at these creatures. Readable gra uh, readable grail, a genetic grail, right there in the Grand Canyon. And the farther you go back in archive images, the more you can realize the faces that I have highlighted and shown to you. All right. Now, what prompted me to go back and make this video? Well, because... In ancient times, they say that God is associated with cherubs, with cherubiums. I'm bringing you cherubiums, or, cher uh, or cherubs, God's messengers, is there. There's an image of, of an image of a man which can be associated with God right there as well, two people. Between so-called the, the, the mentioning of Aaron's staff or the symbol of authority, there, a gateway. God spoke to Moses between these locations. It's my position that if any speaking was going on originally, then the Grand Canyon location is the location, the Holy Grail, the beginning from which all of these original things actually occurred. It's my position that what is being stated and mentioned in the Bible today is derived from what I've discovered right here, which is in actuality, 
in real life sense. Occurrence right here at the Grand Canyon. And it's my position that not only at the location of Grand Canyon, but South Dakota, Yellowstone Park, all of these locations that are now historical landmarks, areas that you can go to and, and feel spiritually attached to. I can show you similar finds, amazing discoveries that was never previously discovered before in the archaeological sense or geological sense of the history of those that have been to these locations and have done surveys and testings and but I have done. I have. I found this through my true paranormal sense of awareness and vision, multi-dimensional sense of awareness and vision. I have found this, people. And the beauty in all of this is that you don't need no scientific confirmation to back me up. Or confirm any of this. You know why? Because with today's technology, you can go on and Google archive images, tourist images for that sake, amateur images of the Grand Canyon Park, the Grand or any park there for that people matter in 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 um in North and South America, and see what I'm showing you is authentic. So, let's go back to this, these images, these divine images, which brought me here in the first place, and the Ark of the Covenant. People, is it not a fact that wherever this is, wherever they are, then logically speaking, are you... I mean, you are of um, reasoning to be a logical person. Then, if I discovered that the angels of God, the Ark of the Covenant, if I've discovered that there are symbols on the side of the Grand Canyon's wall, or um, on mountain sides, then people, then isn't it factual that I've discovered? The Holy Grail, where life has begun and emerged, if I'm telling you that I can read glyphs that were never discovered before at the Grand Canyon, this is the Colorado River, and all you have to do is Google archive images. This is your, this is, your, this is, I mean, this is logical now, people, that I'm speaking with you. Archive images of the Grand Canyon, and ultimately, you would run up on these images that I am showing you. Tourist pictures, governmental pictures, reference pictures of these locations. And you would run up on the same exact images. There could be in circulations thousands, maybe hundreds and thousands of images of just this particular location. And I'm telling you that you will still see these faces. These are not no Photoshop images. Can't nobody downplay these or anything like that there. Um, can't nobody downplay any of this. Then why in the world am I not went viral yet with this information? You know why? Because this is the day, the dawn of the days, that they knew that something like this would happen. Those that know a little about this information, or similar information, knew that one day that they were going to, that this was going to happen. And the reason why you don't see this stuff going viral in the news, you don't see this stuff going viral on the internet, you don't see this stuff taken off in the way that it's supposed to, because those people that are in power through Christianity, through science, and through a wave of a network of entities, 
There are barriers that try to barricade this information from coming to the masses of the world. Why would that be then? Why would that be? You know why would that be? It's because the kings and queens of our world, the royalty, the superpowers of our world, and I'm not talking about those that are sitting in the seats because they don't know nothing. I'm talking about the ancient rooted parts of this. Those that control this, the, the powers from behind the scenes, through religion, through science, through governmental industry. They know they have the power to stop this. Imagine a news networking person. Imagine you as being a newscaster or news correspondent and you're looking at my video and you see me explaining this and you believe in everything that I am stating and then you take this to your supervisor, your mentor to say, hey, look, let's do a story on this. This is an amazing story. This guy has almost in the excess of 200 videos on YouTube and I believe in everything that he's stating and they say, holy, stop. Do you want to lose your job? Do you want to work here again? Do you want to be blackballed from it? Forget that you even actually saw this. Give me all your material and, 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 and they toss it in the can. You know why? Because the day that this stuff goes viral, every ancient religion loses its credibility amongst the people that are serving them. I don't care if you're from Iraq. I don't care if you're from... Africa. I don't care if you're from Japan. I don't care if you're from China. I don't care where you're from America. I don't care where you're from. Every institution that holds a, re uh, uh, a, 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 a religious bond over the people, a religious control, everything science, everything educational, now becomes called into question. Because here you have a person just like yourself, bringing to you things that have never been re revealed before in the Bible, in, in ancient texts, on television, but yet the same images that I'm showing you, I can link them to Hollywood. They're selling them to you back in movies. Walt Disney's success is built on their knowledge of this. Christianity, an ancient religion globally, not just one religious group, all, Hindu, all, their success and their control over you through religion is all based on this hidden knowledge in which I'm bringing to you now. What you eat, what they're giving to you as far as in education, they're brainwashing you with, what you eat in your food, Everything, people, that is going on today is based on having this knowledge of who you truly are. Your identity. Their hold on you with the Bible and other ancient texts are based on stories that I can take apart. I had no interest in the Bible whatsoever. And up to about four years ago, when I messed around and had my experience and encounter, my paranormal experience and encounter, I got the understanding where verbatim, I can pick the Bible up now and become riveted to the Bible. You know why? Because before I didn't understand it when they were trying to give it to me in a spiritual sense. But now that I understand it. You know why? Every page of the Bible, because it shows you from the beginning, from Adam and Eve, throughout, through all of the journey of Jesus and everybody else, Moses, John the Baptist, Mary Magdalene, and, and, the, and the three Marys, all of that information is talking about how they genetically picked up from a time that is bridged from this, that which I am showing you. It's a genetic grail, people. You have been had. I can tell you where you came from, where you can go. The multidimensional doorways which do exist, I can tell you I have the keys to them. I can open up any doorway. 
whether it be to hell, whether it be to heaven, whether it be in between the purgatory, it's my position that I hold the keys to everything that they sold upon you. I don't care if it's in our world, beyond our world, throughout space. What I'm telling you is that I can read our world in its entirety. I can read our world into the past, meaning Mercury and Venus. I can read our world from that, this point to the future, which is Mars and beyond. I can read to you images that appear here, just like I'm, I'm doing this to, for you, off the rocks in the Grand Canyon. What is that other image of those cherubs? Uh, do I have that here? Just as I, oh, here it is here. Just as I am showing you faces here on the Grand Canyon walls and here, these symbols, I can read in the, our entire space in the same way. What I am telling you that there is a link between our world, other worlds which were previous, worlds that are being created now, places in space where stars are supposed to be being created, and nebulae gas matter in space. I can do this. I can show you faces that you would think is something that would be from a horror movie or from some type of sci-fi show, but yet I can also link those faces to Hollywood and, and their knowledge of having a knowledge similar to that of mine on how they even created these movies in the first place. I can show you how commercials in our TV, just from cars that they're trying to sell you, I can show you commercials that are happening during the Super Bowl on how that stuff is linked to that. I can show you how they are mind-fucking you, as well as brainwashing you, with your own ancestral understanding of your genetic being, and you are awed by it, impressed by it, because it is all them, all they're doing is catering to something that they know who you are. Your ancient secret. It's like taking you and and taking you from your mother and father at birth. They look alike you and and your and your other siblings at birth, and they and and you and then keep flashing them across to you in front of TV and in passing, and you keep saying, walking past this person and turning around and saying, "Man, that person could be my sister." Oh, why am I so attracted to this person? Man, that, that, that this person is like a mother figure to me. And what's going on? And they're in your everyday... This is what is happening, people. You are spiritually and genetically linked to all of this. And they're catering to those needs in you because they understand what you are going through. The feelings that you are having. Homosexual feelings. Lesbian feelings. All of this stuff, people, genetic identifiers to what we were genetically bridged over and what we were sub our ancestors were subject to. Homosexuality, lesbian, le lesbianism, let's take if that's if that's a word. All of this stuff is what is going on in today's religion on how we were genetically bridged to, to get to where we are now. It's a cyclonation of mankind's genes in a cult-like ritual which calls for who we are today. You are confused based on everything that your ancestors were previously subjected to. My name is Jerome Wright. You're watching my Jeronification channel. And it's my position that if you listen, the Ark of the Covenant, understanding everything that is in ancient text today, is here with me in my videos. I have the keys to it all. I can explain hell to you as I am explaining this to you. I, I can explain hell to you. I can explain everything in between. I can I can explain the celestial alignments of why these locations are important with that of in space. I can show you that you can go to these places and how our ancient ancestors done it. I can point you in a direction from products in your home, 
from simplest as being like that of hairsprays, your food, anything, and link it to all of that in which that I can tell you. I can show you those that have, that have built their success on having some of the knowledge as to this. And link everyone together to one. Is guilty as charged. Artists from our past, their art schools, their affiliations with Christian beliefs, those that actually actually made um, references in ancient biblical times, all of that, those artworks that have became famous. Globally, I can go anywhere. I can go into your 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 friend's house that has these these Renaissance paintings in their house, and I can take a picture of it print it out and show you and, and write and, and draw on it everything ancient symbolic symbolic symbol that is in there that is referenced because it all references the same thing. These artists became famous for their knowledge of who we genetically were and were able to put them in multi-dimensional images like a collage in their artworks. And that's why their artworks look the way they do. My name is Jerome Wright. I'm going to end this video. And people, you got to wake up. Google this to a friend. I don't care what you do. Get my message out. I'm going to end this video. I'm getting upset.